Hey, I'm Emily Canal. I'm a staff writer here at Inc. and I'm our resident Shark Tank expert. Today we're breaking down season 10, episode five of Shark Tank, Kate Field, who's pitching her company, The Kombucha Shop. Kate Field walked into the tank seeking $350,000 for 10% of her company, the kombucha shop. We've taken what was once seen as a slimy and scary process and created a fun and easy to use kit that guarantees anyone can brew kombucha at home. Do you drink kombucha? Yeah, I definitely, I definitely have. And I like it, I lo especially when it's flavored like apples. And then it tastes good. Now sharks, I'd like to introduce to you your new best friend. What? What? <laughs> I treated kombucha kind of like sausage or hot dogs where I don't want to know how it's made or what goes in it, I just want to consume it. Okay. Ah! So for Kate's pitch, what really stood out for me was the fact that she had really strong sales figures and seemed to do everything right in terms of pitching the sharks, having a really strong personality, a really great bootstrap story. The companies that really appeal to the sharks are the ones made from the ground up. How much have you done in Kickstarter or Indiegogo? None. None? No, I started this company with $800. They don't want to hear that you have 22 investors and, you know, 2.5 million has been invested in your company and you're still drowning. Kate didn't have any outside investors. She owned 100% of the company and started it with $800, which most of the sharks on that panel had done themselves. So when Kate said that she wanted to get into, into retail, her dream was Whole Foods. And Sarah Blakely kind of balked at this. She was like, well, your margins right now don't really support retail, and you're doing so great in direct marketing. Giving up a lot of equity for us to call Whole Foods. She said, you know, I want to blitz the market. I want to beat out my competitors who are already cropping up on Amazon. So she really did bounce back from that, though, and gave a good response. And, and that's a key thing on Shark Tank is you can rehearse all you want, but you never know how it's going to go exactly and what little things the sharks are going to pick up on and start to, you know, criticize almost about your company and, and your model and your plans for expansion. So her response was really strong and she was able to bounce back from a little bit of criticism. I'll give you 350000 for 20%. Let the bidding begin. Kevin O'Leary made the first offer, which she didn't even really blink at, which was smart. <laughs> and as Sarah Bleakley was about to say, I'm out, Barbara interrupted her. Wait, wait, Sarah. Why don't I just make a deal, and if you'd like to join me, you're more than welcome. OK. I'm going to give you 200 in cash, 150 in a credit line with the 10%. What's your ask? Sarah Blakely quickly said she'd get in on that with Barbara, and then Wait, I'm going to take that right. deal. Yay! Before Mark Cuban could even say anything, his face almost looked like he wanted to ask her to prom, but like didn't get there fast enough. And he was just like, oh, OK. Good for you. N no. So to recap, the big takeaways here are she went in with a valuation that was really high. She valued her company at 3.5 million. And when Kevin O'Leary sort of balked at that, she immediately backed it up with the fact that she has $3.2 million in lifetime sales. So all of a sudden, the question of her actual valuation was blown out the window. Then she went in a little further to the history of her company and talked about how she bootstrapped it with $800 of her own money, how she grew it to the $3.2 million in sales, and she hasn't spent a ton of money on advertising or customer acquisition either. And then lastly, she made a deal. She went in looking for a deal with someone who could help her grow the retail space, and she got it with Barbara and with Sarah Blakely. So that's Tips from the Tank. I'm Emily Canal, and I'm going to go get myself some kombucha.